It's nice to know that you got some elephant in the Juma bush. I miss that bush actually. The uh, memories I have over there are just many and very, very nice. These lions are just peeling out of the bush at the moment. There's just lions everywhere around us. It's awesome. And you can see them marching down the road. The lionesses are definitely taking them somewhere. I'm not too sure where or for what reason. It's not unusual for lions to move around this time of the day. It still is relatively cool, even though the sun is fairly intense. You can see this. They're fat bellies. They definitely had something to eat last night. I'd say probably a full-grown zebra again. Everyone's got a belly full of meat. These lionesses are really good huntresses. There you go. There's the lead lioness with the little cubs. She's taking her cubs somewhere, definitely. Miguel, you'd like to know if the lions here are just are bigger than the ones at Juma or just bulkier? That's actually a good question, Miguel. Um, I don't think so. Um, I think that these lions are the same size as the lions in Juma. I think that they, on average, I haven't seen any extraordinarily big lions. I have seen extraordinarily big lions in the Kruger National Park. Oh, talking about extraordinarily big. Have a look at that elephant at the back of this line. Mm, massive tusks. All right. There's big ellies, big lions everywhere. Lions in the road, lion cubs everywhere. Let's have a look at this view we've got here down the road. Amazing. Traffic jam of lion. All different ages. From the three adults all the way through to the youngest cubs. Oh, that is just super cute. So, just to finish that statement, I don't think that these lions are any bigger. Even though that the, the prey size that they eat here is on average bigger, I think. Because they eat a lot of wildebeest and zebra here. The lions in, in, at Juma, though, are supreme buffalo hunters. The Nkuhuma pride have specialized in hunting buffalo. And that, is, that has led to, in my opinion at least, very strong lions. They're very bulky, very strong in their, in their hind quarters and their fore quarters. And the male lions that I've seen coming through Juma are enormous. The Birmingham boys, while... Weren't too big when they first arrived. Now are looking super. And I don't see a lot of male lions here, to be honest. There's, uh, you don't see too many of them out here. Well, I haven't, at least anyway. But I don't get out as much as the others do. But it'll be interesting to see. Michelle, you'd like to know if, uh, lep if, if lion cubs will climb trees the same as leopard cubs do if they were in danger. Uh, yes, they're not as good at climbing trees, of course, but they will climb trees when they can and if they can. And in particular in this area, I think that uh, lion cubs would climb trees more often than those elsewhere because of the danger of hyena here. So... A lot of hyena, and the only way to get away from hyena is actually to is actually to climb a tree. And so I think that there's pretty fairly well developed tree climbing skills, I would imagine. These lions having a drink. They don't need to drink. They get enough water from the prey that they they eat, especially the the insides, the juicy insides but they won't waste a chance to drink some water where they can and especially with a belly full of meat like this these older cubs would take a drink whenever there was water available as we can see i don't think they're going to drink for very long oh just look at that reflection in that puddle fantastic Oh, 
real super morning this morning. Elephants with Tristan in the dawn, in a wintry juba, and an entire lion family in the Mara Triangle in what is the start of their dry season. Um, all Nick in Michigan, you've just wanted to know if a rhino came across these cubs, would it attack it? Would, would it leave them alone? <laughs> um, all Nick, uh, whew, let me see if I can think about this question. I've never seen rhino, uh, attacking lion. I've seen lion riding rhino around. They do it as a bit of a game almost. And the rhino have almost always tried to get away. Um, would they attack lion cubs if they were around? I can't imagine why they wouldn't. In particular here you have black rhino which are cantankerous things to start with. I can't imagine why they wouldn't want to attack a cub if they found it uh, not lying around. With the exception of this thought. Um, the areas where lion cubs are frequently, they, they, uh, they smell like lion. and. Rhino's sense of smell is the most highly developed sense that it has. And I think that the overwhelming smell of lion would sort of prevent most of the attack from happening. And I think that unless a rhino was heavily provoked or it was really just in a, in a, in a, in a perfect place at the perfect time, I don't actually think that that, uh, that that would happen in reality. Is it feasible? Yes, of course. In reality, I don't think that it would happen, not easily at least, anyway. I'm going to just go past this bush. And put us into a position where we can see these lions. And give some space to some other vehicles to have a look at as well. are joined by a bunch of other vehicles and so it's always good just to have some manners there we go there's that lioness standing on top of the termite mount you might find that this is exactly what she wanted to to do in the first place was to come to the series of termite mounds they're a rarity here definitely not as common as they are at juma and the ad, the added advantage of being able to stick your head out of the grass and look at what what you're hearing is is massive here and here she's joined by her cubs doing exactly the same thing Oh, that's beautiful. Sunny Jen, you'd like to know uh, how would lions hunt without the grass to hide them? That's a good question, Sunny Jen. Um, I can only talk from my experience watching lions in the Kalahari, which has got no grass and just sand. And there they use depressions. So very similar to here where they'll, they'll pick thickets of grass and bushes to use. There, there's always these folds in the land. And lions will very often use these folds in the land uh, to their advantage. they supreme strategists uh, when it comes down to killing things. And they will use any depression, bush, termite mound, rock, thicket that they can to try and get close to their intended prey. In this particular area, they use grass and thickets. At Juma, they use the thickets and the drainage lines and ravines there. Kalahari, they use the folds in the sand and the sand dunes in between and on roads quite often. So it's definitely not a detriment to lion, in other words, not having grass. But in areas where there is grass, they'll obviously use it. The lion's busy, fastidious at cleaning themselves. Much like any cat would be. Also, she's positioned herself on top of a termite mound, and I think it's just a habit of these cats in this area that they will use high points where, where they can. And it's just literally to get their faces and their heads out of the sea of grass, I think. I would presume that that's it. That line is going up to another high point. She's definitely listening to something here in front of her. 
she's not running from anything. So they're not moving from anything. And she's taking her cubs from one place to another because of danger behind us. She's definitely had her ears pricked forward most of the morning. So she's going someplace. Could she be moving dens? Yeah, she could. They do build up a smell. And that smell quite often is attractive to other predators. Male lion that move into an area will kill cubs if they're not theirs. And of course, hyena, the ever-present danger out here, will kill cubs as soon as they can if the cubs are left unattended and they can get to them. So Raya, you'd like to know how different the dry season is in the Mara as it is in Juma. Well, the biggest difference I can show you is right now, um, there's no massive temperature variation so close to the equator. So summertime, wintertime, or let's call it dry season, wet season, temperatures are fairly similar, uh, with the exception, of course, when it rains. Um, oh, drought, excuse me. Excuse me, Soraya, it was the drought that you wanted to know. Um, Ooh, that's a good question. Mainly, the savanna that we have at Juma is a woodland savanna, not a grassland savanna. So it's predominantly, predominantly trees and shrubs. And drought affects trees and shrubs a lot more than it does grass uh, initially. Um, as we saw with the drought at Juma over the last 24 months or so, it reduced the grass cover to zero. But at the same time, it also reduced the tree cover to virtually leafless, just with a little bit of leaves and twigs around. Um, how it will affect this area, you probably find that initially uh, we will have, initially we will have um, the grass getting drier and drier to a point where it actually lies down completely. And if it goes on for long enough, it'll actually turn into sand and blow away. I just want to move forward here so we can give some space. We've, uh, obviously, the news of lion cubs on the road has has spread far and wide, and there's a lot of people that would like to come and watch, which is good. All right, so Sarai, just to close off there, I think that initially we won't see too much of a difference, but what would happen, what will happen, is the fact that the the grass cover will 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 get lower and lower to a point where it disappears. Will it do that in the Mara? I'm not too sure. I'm not sure exactly how drought affects the Mara. This is the driest year in living memory in the Mara. The, the river's never been as low as it is now. And, uh, and that will have an effect on the grass cover. And with us, you'll be able to go on this journey, uh, similar to how we, we enjoyed the drought at Juma, and you'll be able to see exactly what happens and how it affects it over the next couple of months. All right. We're going to be sending you back over to Tristan.